I certainly started to have my doubts along this hike, but I'm proud to say that we've made it to Silver City, Idaho. A lot of people would spend their spring break somewhere that's nice and warm and sunny. Maybe you're down in Florida or Southern California enjoying the sun, warm beaches, but not us. We are actually gonna be spending our spring break out here in the middle of nowhere, out in Eastern Oregon. that we slept inside of the truck. It's about 7 a.m. right now. And if you look around, 13 degrees at the moment, which means it was probably even colder a couple hours ago. Um, this is the great thing about not having a tent though, is that we're already in the cab of the truck. All I had to do is just push the ignition button and all of a sudden, heated seats are warming up. It feels pretty good. Well, our destination is up this way, and as you can see, it's a pretty tight, snowy road. Uh, we were actually making pretty good progress, and then there were a few sections where we were just sort of starting to get a little bit stuck where there were snow drifts. And we got concerned because other sections of the river get a lot narrower than what you see right here. So we decided it probably wasn't wise to keep going. I don't wanna risk sliding into the river, or getting stuck out here. And so we figured we'd turn around, uh, maybe hike up, Got down to this point where we had a nice wide section over here. So we thought, okay, we'll move over to the side and park in case anybody else comes along. And as you can see, we're in pretty deep now. Given it a couple attempts to try to get out already using crawl control, multi-train select, obviously four high, four low, um, and uh, locking rear differential, so far nothing. So we're doing a little bit of digging, got the traction boards out. We do have the winch, but as you can see, there aren't really locations that we can necessarily tie on to so we might save that as the last resort there's a chance that tree over there maybe we could reach but i'm not too optimistic and this one's pretty small so i think we'll uh see if we can get it without the winch maybe save that as a last resort here um, you can see snow is basically all the way up to the chassis there so we're in real deep obviously we've done a lot of digging in front of and behind each of the wheels now to give us some space and chris is clearing some of the snow in front of the truck so that if we do get momentum we're not just plowing through that, so. Getting ready here for another attempt. Wish us luck. Well, we didn't get any movement there, so I figured it was time to give the winch a try. Uh, it's not the ideal situation, but we've got this tree up here on the hill. It's actually a pretty good angle where if it pulls us that direction, it'll get us unstuck. So, you know, the fact that it's smaller and up on the hill is not ideal, but I think it'll work. Um, I've got the hidden winch down here inside of the truck. So down below, I've got a mount from Hidden Winch Mount Specialist. I've got the Rough Country winch. And then you can see I pulled off my license plate and I've got the um, fair lead hidden back behind there. So we've got the winch strap here. We've got our Rhino USA toe strap around there as a tree saver. And then I've got my weight on here to weight down um, the winch line here in case it were to snap. Um, I've actually never used the winch before in action, so I'm a little bit nervous. I installed this myself, never used a winch in my life. So. Uh, watch some videos, so hopefully I know what I'm doing here. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and give it a try here. Now what we got going on here is the winch is doing its job just fine. I think it actually might get us out. But if you look up here at this tree, let me go ahead and put the winch back out. You see how much it bent that tree over. Obviously I don't want to take any chances breaking a tree. Um, 
I do have it up a little bit higher than I could, so maybe lowering that down would help. And then I'm also eyeing that larger tree up there. Just the angle gets a little tricky on that to pull it over that much further. Well, thank goodness we are out. Uh, the real hero here was definitely the winch, but there was another unsung hero. It wasn't the tree, which was really handy, but traction boards came in really handy. You will see that one of them suffered a little bit of damage. So that's unfortunate, but it did get us out, which would be a lot cheaper than a towing bill in this situation. Here's the wreckage. You can see we got some pretty deep ruts there, actually. Probably hard to see on camera, but if I come stand here, I mean, like in this spot right here, we're up past my knees in the snow and we got plenty more of that so pretty deep snow over here and a lot of different layers of uh, snow so like you know it's ice powder ice powder so tricky stuff to get out of but fortunately we did thank goodness for the winch so pack things up head back down the road chris is sitting in the car because he's cold we're gonna go for it we're gonna run up the road and back um, he's gonna miss out on some cool stuff though sitting over in the, the car because we got some cool things to see over here as you can see up here some sort of old barn or storage building wow this is so cool oh even has sort of a concrete floor check this out we've got some sort of big metal drum structure or something sort of mechanical thing maybe and then just up the hillside we've got an old mine that is so cool so it's the entry to the mine the little doors coming in and out ah, signs that obviously say to keep out don't go in there sure is tempting I gotta say got a cool building up on the hillside here just across the way too man it's so cool Interesting choice for them to build this structure on the hillside here. They didn't even bother to level out the ground or anything first, it looks like. And that would explain why their structure has uh, started to tilt down the hill. Definitely won't go inside of there, because it looks pretty fragile. And crazy to think of somebody living in this building, you know, over a hundred years ago, working the mine across the river, Wow, it's so cool. Some sort of structure here, that could be an outhouse, given the size. Wow, this is really cool. What a pretty setting, again, the mine across the river. Yeah. Well, we've been hiking for pretty close to an hour now, and we're actually not sure how far we've gone or how far we have to go. Definitely the right call not to drive up this road. We could have made it a little further, but not much further than where we stopped. So that was a good call in that sense. We're uh, head up that direction. Came from down there. Keep being tempted with the possibility of turning around just because it's taking so long. We have a long way to go, but man, the further you get, the more committed you are. Chris actually was about to turn around, oh, quarter mile into our jog, maybe even less, maybe an eighth of a mile. And uh, we actually turned around for a second. I was like, no, Chris, we gotta go. We gotta go, we gotta keep going. We'll walk, we'll run, 
and now looking now freaking trail the views just continue to impress over there totally looks like the Thunder Mountain Railroad at Disneyland you can see where they get their inspiration from you can just tell these hills are rich in silver and gold right there we got the outhouse for the old mine workers and uh, up there we got Silver City as you can see Chris isn't with me at the moment he uh, he's dropping back routes pretty clear-cut from here and uh, might not be making it all the way he's gonna kind of catch his breath see how he feels if not he'll just wait where I last saw him well I certainly started to have my doubts along this hike but I'm proud to say that we've made it to Silver City Idaho <laughs> Silver City was first established back in about 1864 after uh, silver was discovered at the nearby War Eagle Mountain. Uh, by the 1880s, they had about 2,500 residents, 75 businesses, and 250 mines mining the surrounding mountains. Uh, one of the largest of those mines had about 700 miles of underground tunnels that were hand dug. This town is unreal. It is so cool. You can see we got our church up on the hill there, building there that says 1892 on it, some sort of uh, town hall or schoolhouse or something. Got the watchman living in this house here. Just incredible. Got the cemetery down that way. We may take a little trip down there as well and see what we see. Man, what a cool place. Some of these places are actually open different times of the year. So like here we got the hotel and bar. I don't know that this is specifically open, but I do know they have some places that you can stay up here, some restaurants. That would be really cool. I would not be surprised if, uh, if I'm back here again at some point with my family or something. Spend the night. So cool, we got a baby carriage in the window there. Just a cool town. It's so cool to imagine that back in the 1800s, they had 2,500 people living here, 70 businesses, 250 mines around the city. Just thinking of this place bustling, full of action. This building up here says Idaho Standard School. So this must have been the schoolhouse for all the miners workers. Pretty cool to think of kids studying in this building back in 1892 out here in such a desolate place. I would love to spend more time here, um, but as I mentioned, this trip took a lot longer than we had originally planned. And uh, Chris, actually he did make it here. So he trudged his way up the hill while I was doing some filming, took a quick look, and I told him, head back down, get a head start on me so that we can make good time. Gives him a chance to kind of recover, go slow. So we got our tracks here in the snow. I'm gonna put the camera away and start booking it down the hill. We gotta get back to the car so we can get back to Bend, get back to our families. Well, that was a bit of a jaunt and I am pretty tired, but sight for sore eyes. Got the Tacoma sitting right there. So pleased to be back at the car. Looks like we lost Chris. He's probably not gonna be too happy when he gets back. If you recall about eighth of a mile, quarter of a mile into our little trip, he uh, wanted to head back and I pushed him forward. So he's probably gonna be maybe a little bit quiet for the next portion of the trip. But in all fairness, I was ready to go home last night and he's the one that wanted to come up here. So I helped push him, pursue his dreams, live it out. And I bet you by the time he's watching this, he'll have forgiven me, hopefully. So uh, very pleased to be spending the rest of the trip on four wheels and not these two legs. Nice work. Well, we're in Burns, Oregon, and we just stopped here at Glory Days Pizza to finish off a nice journey. It's probably gonna be the most exciting part of the entire trip. As you'll see, we've got a 14 inch pepperoni pizza. 12 slices, 
Nine slices for me, three for Chris. Right, Chris? That's right. I might give him four. We'll see. But this was predetermined ahead of time. He was good with it, so I'll take it. Now this is how you do a proper road trip. Pete's on your lap. Nine slices to be exact. I just dropped Chris off at his house and I am headed home. Super excited to see my wife and kids and definitely looking forward to that shower. Um, had a great time this week. It is incredible how beautiful Southeast Oregon and Southwest Idaho are. We just spent a few days out there and saw some amazing sights, but you could literally spend weeks or months out here. There is so much to see. Highly recommend that if you're anywhere close to this part of the country that you uh, add it to your list of uh, places to visit at some point. Uh, it truly is an incredible part of the country. Um, really looking forward to the next adventure in that part of the world as well as many others to come. Uh, to stay up to date on my adventures and to see more Third Gen Tacoma videos, be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.